Funding for Painting Journeys is provided by Veritas. Financial knowledge is power. Be empowered. God's beauty is all around us, and my goal as an artist is to capture and interpret that beauty on canvas and to take you, the viewer, along with me on this painting journey. Hello, and welcome to Painting Journeys. Once again, my name is Kitty Lynn Klisch, and uh, we, this is Painting Journeys, and we're going to journey across the canvas today to uh, a new destination. We're going to the Great Northwest. But first of all, um, I wanted to show you how our last painting turned out. If you remember, we were uh, talking, about, uh, we were in Ireland, the back roads, country roads, and we came up across this farm that was so um, lovely. And I, as I mentioned, I, I couldn't really tell if somebody lived there or not because there wasn't, there wasn't uh, any, anything going on. But anyway, it was quaint and it was beautiful. And here's the final picture. So uh, without further ado, we better get started on, uh, on our trip to the Northwest. The area that we are um, in today is the southeastern part of the state of Washington. And uh, in fact, it's Cowlitz County. Um, my sister lives there, and I had the wonderful opportunity to go and visit her. Um, and this is a little, this is a little uh, stream or, or, or creek, creek as we say in the West. <laughs> anyway, um, and it's the mill, mill, uh, the mill stream. And um, there are a lot of mills, uh, of course, you know, the paper industry, uh, the logging and everything in Washington state. But there's so many areas that have not been logged out that are so beautiful and still so natural. They're like, almost like untouched. The water is, um, is so clear that you can see the rocks through the water. And, and, it, it, and it runs fast. It runs much faster than it does here in the Northwest. It's really very, very beautiful. It's um, really God's country, and uh, I love it there. Um, today, I, what I want to do is I've, I didn't have an opportunity to uh, start my canvas. I had some ideas of how I wanted to start it. I think what I'll do is I'm just, I'm just going to block in uh, quickly try to block in some values and um, we'll get started with that. My, my palette is my usual palette. I always use the same, the same colors practically in every painting and then I, I mix. I mean this is each artist has their own palette. This happens to be mine and um, I will mix the various grays and um, other shades that I want from the colors that are on my palette. Now, you know, you, you don't just paint with pure chroma. You have to mix and gray. And so for right now, I had hoped to do a lot of work on this painting with a palette knife. Um, it's a little too thin. So I've thinned down my paint quite a bit, and I want it nice and dark. Um, and I just want to block this area in back in here. Too, too, too thin. Let's put a little blue in there. There we go. All right, now I, just, I want to block in the darks. And that is, I see that as coming around here like so, and then it seems to come back up, maybe not that low, up about like this, okay? And there is a shadow here that is where these trees here are casting this, 
this shadow. And so that's going to be dark also all along in there and uh, dark across, across this back here where the water is. Um, and yeah, okay. And then there's another shadow that's coming like this and then it kind of comes across here almost like a, a long finger pointing. Water's moving very fast and What's so fascinating is that you can, you can actually see the fish in the water. It's, uh, you know, I, it, it's really fascinating watching them. Great big fish, you know, salmon and, and fish like that, especially when they're going upstream to spawn. It's just incredible. You see these huge fish in this shallow water and Sometimes they have to fight their way up rapids and um, dams. Um, there's one, uh, the Grand Coulee Dam is, is um, really nice because they, they actually have a fish ladder for the salmon so that the salmon can get up the stream to where they want to go to, to um, hatch their, or lay their eggs. And then it's so sad because then they swim out to the, back out to the ocean and die. But that's the cycle of life. It's a harsh life up there. A lot of, a lot of people are, are um, I would say that they probably do live below the poverty line, but, you know, it, um, they're hardy, though. They're hardy people, very hardy and hard working. They live hard. Everything they do, it seems to me that they, they do with great gusto, great love of life. Nice people. You would like them. I don't know if you've ever had the chance to go to Washington State, but I think you would really like it there. It's gorgeous. And you just, you don't know where to Put your eyes next. It's so pretty. I always am fortunate because my sister lives in a little tiny town called Kathlamet. And a few years ago, we had a family reunion. My brother and my sister from Denver and uh, my... Uh, husband and I, we all met there at my sister's house that lives in Kathlamet, Washington. And that's really something. It's, Kathlamet is a great area. It's, it's um, a little tiny island off the mainland that was settled by the Norwegians. And they have a they have built like a dike that goes around the island, um, and they're kind of they're they're in a little bit on the Columbia River, away from the mouth of the Columbia River. They're, they sit back a little bit, not too far from Longview. Anyway, they um, the Norwegian people uh, built this this dike, and so when the water actually rises uh, up from the ocean. The tide comes in on the ocean. The Columbia, the mouth of the Columbia River there will actually rise and, and, um, and then lower as the tide comes in and out. So um, they built a dike around this little tiny island in this, this settlement and uh, it's really uh, quite enterprising. They don't ever have to worry about a flood. Um, thank goodness, because I understand they get a lot of rain once in a while. Well, the whole, 
you know, the whole eastern side of Washington State and Oregon gets a lot of rain. It's just one of those things. I'm working hard and fast. I want to get this kind of like um, blocked in because then I want to try to come back with my knife and and see about um, making some some details. Okay, let's see. I hope you like green. We certainly have a lot of it on our on our canvas today. <laughs> yeah, I like green. Green is good. There we go. And I don't want to um, do anything right here yet until I make up my mind what I'm going to do. Sometimes you just kind of have to stop and wait um, and wait for the, the um, inspiration or the whatever you want to call it, wait for God to let you know just where to go and what to do next so that you can accomplish what you hope to do here, what you're setting out to do. We've got rocks and things like that in there, but and I'm going to put those in, but for right now, I just want to make sure that I have it kind of covered and kind of, um, and I want that feeling of that water um, on there, rushing water. Yeah, you know, talking about the river, the Columbia River when the tide comes in, that's really something to watch. Um, across from my sister's house, uh, she lives right on the river, there uh, is a, um, a houseboat. And when the, and people live there, uh, uh, actually live on the houseboat, they have a little garden and, and mostly they have hanging gardens. Um, but they, um, when the river comes in, their boat lifts way up high. And when the river goes back out, then the um, boat sinks way down low, um, the houseboat. And this is, you know, like almost like a daily occurrence. Part of the day, they're up real high, and then the other part of the day, they're down real low. And you can tell by their pier where they get on their, uh, where they enter their porch to go into their um, houseboat. It's really, it's really, I, I can't imagine that. Constant motion. Could you imagine living in a house where there was constant, where the house was constantly moving? I mean, it's kind of a, of a neat idea, really. Okay, let's see here. Okay. Now we've got some, we've got some dark in here, and I'm, I'm not making the paint as thin now. I'm going to start going with a little bit of a thicker paint because I'm going more for finish now to put to put um, what I want on top of the, um, I do see some rocks right in here that are coming down. And um, right over in here, okay. No, and then this is dark right in here. There's going to be some light in there too. Okay. And then we're going to take and put some greens on top here. That's not the right color. Want to... 
Okay, so there's some, some going to be some light on those greens there going down. And those rocks are coming down in the water here, and the greens are going to go up in there. Okay, and now I, I think I'll just take my knife and see if I can suggest some trees back here. Okay, I'm sorry I'm not talking to you. I um, am really focusing really hard um, to show you what I wanted, what I have in mind here. And I think, you know, oftentimes you'd think that an artist would know exactly what they're going to do, but but you don't because sometimes things work and then other times it doesn't work and so you have to change direction and approach it from another angle because in your mind's eye you have something very definite that you want but it's not coming out the way you want it to on the canvas so you have to try something different to make it come out. Okay, I'm, I don't want to be real fussy over here. I just want this to, this area in here, to represent a tree. All right, and I think that does it. Okay, and that's enough, okay? And then... Now, then over here, I notice that we have another, another tree, and it's a little bit lighter. And this, is, this knife is pretty nice for making trees. It kind of um, it has the right shape to it, the head. If you can see what I mean, it has the nice uh, shape to it to form the trees there. Fishing. I don't know if you like to fish or not, but fishing is very, um, when you lake fish, it's very peaceful. But when you fish in a river like this, you better be prepared for action because I'm telling you, when they strike, they fight. And it is difficult to bring them in. Uh, my husband and I, we always believed in a catch and release type situation. And so that's what we do. But, you know, we don't fish that much anymore. It's kind of, I don't know, you kind of start wondering about how that must feel to be caught. But, okay. I'm going to go back over that now and uh, with a little darker green and and there we go and see so that just set that little um, bit back and now we're going to um, come over here and we have a another tree right in here, but it's a little different kind of tree. So I'm going to make my, my strokes be a little different. Um, I'm going to make them be not so, not so Christmas tree-like. And then there's some different color in here too that we're seeing. There's some little bit of reds and and um, uh, 
Yeah, there's little reds in there. And that, you know, the red is the complement of the green, so that makes it really nice, too. You know, I, I appreciate it so much that you're with me today and, and, and watching me. I'm, I'm struggling. I'm having a difficult time. But, you know, that's okay, because it's good for you to see me struggle. It truly is. You know, making, creating art isn't always um, as easy as it looks. Sometimes the artist has to accept uh, something that perhaps isn't, isn't what they had originally envisioned. And yet, if that's the best that you can do at that particular moment in time, then you have to accept that and you go on from there because you're only as good as your next painting, not as good as your last one. So yeah, it's good for you to see me struggle a little bit, I think. It's like anything that's really worthwhile, you know, you have to work for it. It's not worth it if you're not working for it, I think. So anyway, we'll just, I'm just gonna put this back there I love working with a palette knife. I love to make things look like it. it's just like frosting on a cake here. And I want the, the lights and it's just such a, a jumble here, you know? And so if I try to give you um, how the photograph is, if I try to give that to you to view, you know, it won't be a painting. Um, I might as well just leave the photograph. Um, so I'm just trying to find the, the colors and values that I think will represent or suggest um, what we have here. Now I do see some trees, dead trees, and there are a lot of dread, dead trees in the forest and they have to keep those trimmed out because if they don't that's what really causes the the forest fires they go you know they, I mean you talk about a wildfire I mean they go like wild um, when they don't keep that underbrush and the dead fallen trees cleaned out and this particular spot is kind of like oh sort of deserted and so there's not much forest management that's been going on here. Let's see if we can get some nice um, dead looking things coming up there to kind of give it a little bit of a of a um, Something besides just green here. There we go. And they, there is a little bit of light on those, so I'll probably come back with a small, I think I'll come back, yeah, I'll come back with a small brush and come in there and put just a little bit of light that is hitting on those and kind of brighten that up. Give a little different look there. And I'm going to mix a little bit of red with the, the white to do that. Okay. So we can see that there's just a little, oops, too much paint. Wow. The paint doesn't want to leave the brush because I have so much on the, on the, uh, canvas already. There we go. Just the right little touch there. Just here and there. Some little light things that are that are hitting. And there we go. I want it too much. That's definitely not where my my focal area is going to be. 
So, but I think while I'm working with a brush, I will come down and put some stones in the water. Because I want to get those in so that I can um, come over it with the water. And we've got quite a few stones there. And I'm, of course, I'm not going to put everyone in. That would be kind of silly. But these stones are a little darker on the bottom. And here's a nice big one right here that's quite dark. And, and um, we'll come around here. And there we go. Set him in there. He's got a little shadow. And I'm just doing the bottom parts of them now to kind of, uh, and then I'll come across them again with the lighter on the top where the light is reflecting. That's, this was one of those rare, really beautiful days in Washington, on east, in the eastern side of Washington where the, the um, sun was shining and, and it was warm. So much of the time it is raining but then that's really lovely for your complexion because it's, you don't get all dried out there like you do the desert, you know. So that's a good thing, yeah. Think positive. Just make it, make whatever you can out of it. If it's lemons, make lemonade, right? There we go. Okay, now I'm going to come back and I'm going to take a little bit of light and cut and a little tiny bit of yellow, really pale yellow. And I'm going to put a little top to these rocks. OK. And then the very last thing I'm going to try to do today is make these look like they're underwater by bringing the water back over them so that you get the feel that you're seeing the rocks through the water. And it's, it's going to be tricky, but we'll give her a try, you know. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Okay. And then I do see a nice big white. Uh, that's one thing. Uh, some of the stone um, in Washington is, is very very white, very pale, and like this guy down here, he is very, very pale. So we're going to put a little dark and a little brown on the side here where he's coming up, and he's actually up out of the water there. And there's another one right in here. Okay, and then coming across the top is just a little... Okay, and then we do have some pretty flowers there. This um, area right in here needs to have some rocks in there too. And it needs to be a little darker, this shadow coming out here. And let me see here. Okay. I think what I'm going to do is, I think I'm just going to come behind here. There's a lot of light green back in here. And I think I'm just going to come back there and uh, I'll put the dark underneath. And it's kind of a bluish green. And then this lovely, this is a different type of tree. Um, I'm not sure uh, what type of tree that is. You know, as I've told you before, I, I don't pay attention to what things are so much as what color they are and um, what value they are. I, I don't know. I, it, it doesn't matter to me 
uh, what it is. I don't think in things, in you know, naming things. I think in shapes and everything. Now with that dark back there, I'll be able to come and put my my light on top of that. Okay. All right, now, and then we do see a little bit of this over in here too, and it's coming in here. Okay, now I want, I want my shadow here. This is very dark, right underneath there. And that shadow is coming like so, and I'm going to bring my brush down to show that reflection in the water there. And over here is quite dark, so I'm going to bring that down there. Okay, and then I'm going to go across it. Like so. And then we have a little, little bits of that coming out. And we have little traces now of the sunlight showing there in the water especially right in here. And it, it's not a real warm yellow. It's a, a cooler. You know, that's another thing, too. That, well, maybe not. I didn't hit that mark, right? It is a warmer yellow. Yeah. OK. You see yellows, some yellows and greens. They have different temperatures. And if you want to get it so that it looks right, you have to get it so that it's the color is the right temperature, or that won't look right to you, OK? And I'm trying to make it look like there's movement in the water now. And can you see that? Yeah. See, I think it's, I think it's coming. Yeah, I think it's coming. And, um, you see here, I know I'm going to have some real pretty, right here, there's some real pretty wildflowers, and they're very violet colored. And I know I'm going to have those in there, and I'm going to make, but I'm going to make them larger. But before I go to that, I want to come and try to capture the white foam, the froth that the fast moving water is making. Now back in here, the water is, has a bluish uh, tinge to it. So I better get a clean brush. And maybe I'll just take my knife and do that. Yeah. Let's see if we can make some water with our knife. And nice water. And we we'll need a lot of paint. You know, that's one thing I love to paint. I love to paint with thick paint because um, it has this wonderful impasto immediate feel that is um, uh, so fresh and vibrant, and I love that. Yeah, OK. Now, I have this maybe not blue enough. Just a second here. There we go. There we go. You know, any time that you have a question about any of my paintings or my techniques, why, just go to my website and contact me and let me know. And be sure and follow me on my blog. There we go. Now that got up a little too high, so I'm going to take that off. See how easy that is? Love it. There we go. Now we want to put something dark in there because we want that to go back. That's got to be dark in there. 
That area's got to be dark back in there. Maybe we'll put a little bit of red in there. Maybe that'll work better. Yeah, it does. Ooh, I like that. See how that just pops that area? Yeah. Okay. And the water is coming over here. And I think I didn't get the shape of my water right. So I'm going to have to go back in there with my rock and coming in from the outside, try to grab a little bit of water and then come over my rock and come down. So it looks like the water is actually coming over the rock. And that may not be exactly what's happening, but I like it. And since it's my painting, I get to do that. Make those little things that make it a little more interesting. Okay. There we go. Ooh, you hear my knife uh, kind of scraping. That's not a nice sound probably. It's kind of scratchy. Okay, now right over here, we have some nice warm white. So we'll, I'm gonna take a little bit of a translucent yellow and I'm going to put that over here on this water because I want this water to really show that it is in, is in the sunlight. <clears throat> Maybe that's too much, okay? We'll just wipe it off. So if it doesn't work, you know, when in doubt, wipe it out. That's what my teacher always told me. All right, we'll try that again. Only we won't go quite so yellow. And now, here we go. Okay. There. And We'll take a little bit of the green, kind of come up into that and so that it does, whoops, there's some yellow, that's good. Yeah, so that it doesn't look quite so. Move it around a little bit so that it doesn't look quite so. There, now we know that that is really in the water. Now there's areas here that I want to take off because I think there's just a little bit too much white on it. So I'm going to take and bring that down, cut that down just a little bit. I mean, it's all well and good to pile the paint on, but you have to be somewhat careful or you don't really have um, a, something that's more authentic. Okay. All right, there we go. That looks better. Mm-hmm. Now then, let me see here. Let's see here. Let's let's try to um, get some. I think that tree right there. I'm going to try to do this tree right in here. I'm going to just try to do that with a a brush. I think because I don't think that it will work out nice if I do it with my knife. You know we're we're always we always have that time constraint um, that we're working under, and I wish, of course, you probably wouldn't want to watch that long, but I wish that I could just be here with you a lot longer than the show is. An hour is not very long to 
to um, be together and try to show you what I'm trying to. Okay, I think I'll put the. Um, I'm going to try to put the branches in first there. We have these nice reddish brown branches. Let's get those on first so we know where we're at here. Okay. There we go. That's it. That's it. All right. And then there's one here. They're coming up here. There's one coming way down there. And that little bit of red just makes so much difference on the on the um, against the green because it's the complement. That's what that's what makes it exciting. Okay, and this one is way out here. And then over in here, we have just a little bit more where there's a couple that are coming from the side there. Okay, now off of those, let's see if with this little green, if we can just, just make a few little I guess that doesn't show very good. Where do we need it to be? A little lighter? Maybe I didn't have the back dark enough on the on it. Some of these are kind of a reddish color. I'm going to have to come back in and clean that up. I can tell that now. Um, too many branches. This is going to take more. I'll just try to get one or two of them just the way I want it to be. And then the next time you see the painting on the next um, episode of the show, why? It'll be completed and you'll be able to get the, the full feeling of what I was trying to do here. I don't want to get... too carried away on that. All righty, let's see here. A little bit down in here. Such a nice, beautiful green. Right in here. There, we can show that one and that one. Hmm, hmm, hmm. All right, now, before I can do the, the flowers here in the foreground, I just, my cameraman just gave me the 15 minute signal. And so that means I don't really have a lot of time left. So let's see what we can get done in that amount of time. Um, let me see here. Some of this is kind of a yellow green in here. put that in there to kind of pop it a little bit. And there we go. I think that helps a little bit. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, now the one thing I do see is that my shadow in here isn't nearly dark enough. I'm going to come back in with my shadow color, and I'm going to put it in a downward stroke, like so. And that's going to show depth. And it's going to come across here.
Okay, and then we're going to make it have movement. Just by feathering that out just a little bit. Now I'm going to clean this brush really good. And I'm going to take the, hum, I'm going to take yellow and the white. I'm going to thin it just ever so slightly. Okay, now I'm going to say a little prayer and I'm going to hope like crazy that this works. But we're going to very gently and very softly come across the rocks and try to make them look like they are under the water. There we go. There we go. Rocks are under the water. Now we can all breathe, because I didn't ruin it. It did just what I wanted it to do. Now we have a nice movement of, if you see me always looking over and, uh, with one eye, to my, over my left shoulder there. It's because I'm watching that cameraman because he's just looking at me like he just can't wait to show me this sign that I'm almost done just to see what I'm gonna do about it. There we go. So that's what I'm looking at. I'm always checking the time. Pressure. <laughs> pressure, I'm under pressure. Okay, can you feel it? There we go. Oh, yeah, that really looks like it's like the rocks are under the water. Good job. Good job, kitty. Okay, 10 minutes. Okay, 10 minutes left. Oh, I say we put in the flowers. Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and I say we make them kind of, hmm, let's make them kind of, uh, 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 uh. Um, I don't think I want them coming over here because I have a lot of action here. I think I'll bring them over here and have them come up. And I want them up higher. <laughs> You know, I mean, what's the sense of putting flowers in it if you're not going to put flowers in it, right? You know, I mean, you're going to have purple flowers in it against the yellow-green water? Have them. Don't just be skimpy. Make some flowers. That's what it's all about here. And the reason I'm kind of like wiping out a little bit underneath here is because I want to make sure that my flowers don't... Um, turn to gray because there again the violet is the complement of the gray I mean of the green and we don't want gray so now we'll take a little brush and these stems are quite light so I'm going to come up with a lighter white <laughs> Alrighty, maybe a 
I'll thin this down just a wee tiny bit. All right, and then okay, maybe it can be just a a little bit wider here and there. Um, I'm thinking about where should we, I think we're going to stay in the state of Washington um, for our next uh, show or two. I have more that I want to show you, you know, and, and I, oh, I, and I didn't tell you that the re reason that this is called Mill Creek is because there's a big mill right on it, um, up a ways where the river is much wilder and wider and everything. Okay, now we're gonna take some of uh, and make a really beautiful kind of a magenta color here. And we're gonna put that on there. Oh, maybe that's a little too pink. Let's see here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. This is fun. I hope you're having fun. Let me see, a little more over here. And we're gonna come back on those. And, oh my goodness, I'm really getting it now. I just got the seven minute sign. <laughs> okay, this means that we're right down to the nitty gritty. Here we go. Yikes, I didn't want that to look like a tree. Oh well, we'll just sprinkle some more down over in here. Put a few over there, put a few in here. Maybe some come in here. There we go. And we'll come in right here and take some of that away. All right, and then we'll come on top with a little bit of white. Hmm. I'm always looking for the perfect brush, you know. <clears throat> and true, truth be known, <laughs> truth be known that it's not the perfect brush. It's it's who's handling the brush, whether it's perfect or not. Okay, let's make these guys pop a little bit more. Uh, they have to be more pinker, Kitty. Come on. They have to be prettier. More violet. That's not good at all. I'll probably end up taking a few of these out when I get it back to my home studio. I don't know, that's probably too much. That's what happens when you rush. Um, and, I, and I wonder, I really wonder if I really like that color. Probably the flowers would have been better if they would have been like a little, have a little red to them. Oh, you know, red is my favorite color. And I guess somehow or another, I just don't feel satisfied with a painting unless I put a little red on it someplace. So there we go. Now, 
Don't ask me what type of flowers those are because they certainly don't look like what's up above. But we have them on there. And there we go. Okay, now um, for finish, I think I'll just make a few more strokes in this area here to kind of try to make this look more like that type of tree that it is there. And it looks to me like we need a little bit of orange in there. I think that I think that kind of a little bit of orange really kind of helps it a little bit to describe it. Those are dead needles, of course. And um, okay, and right over here, I think we'll um, a little something in there to kind of, there we go. And let me see here. I see that this rock right here on this side right here needs just a little more gray on the side. And this one here does too. And then they need a little light on top. Okay, well, I'm really glad you, sh you joined me today. Um, once again, my name is Kitty Lynn Klisch, and you've been watching Painting Journeys. We have been in Washington State, and uh, we're doing a little, our rendition of Mill Creek, and until next time, when we go further north in Washington State, uh, and once again, my name is Kitty Lynn Klish. You've been watching Painting Journeys, and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye for now. Funding for Painting Journeys is provided by Veritas. Financial knowledge is power. Be empowered.